Action Volleyball presented by Wells Fargo. Well, the 2020 season is underway. Adaptability, flexibility amongst uncertainty is the name of the game, but already two matches under the belt for both of these teams playing a Big 12 only conference schedule here in the fall. And when you talk about adaptability for these Texas Longhorns, it means a new temporary home. We're at the Irwin Center. You see lights are off about to go through introductions. They will not be playing at Gregory Gymnasium, one of the best environments in collegiate volleyball. They will have fans here, but don't get to play at Gregory Gymnasium. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Tyler Denning, Salima Rockwell, a pleasure to have you with us. We are excited, thrilled to be here to bring you some volleyball action. We start with Texas, the number one team in the country, picked to win the Big 12 in Salima. They have the firepower. Man, they always have the firepower, but what I love about this Texas team you're going to see is a more balanced all-around team than you have seen in years past. And of course, it starts with the obvious, the outside hitters and the middle hitters. They were good last year and they're going to be just as good this year. And of course, the back row is improved. Look for their passing and their defense to be better than they have been in years past. The third thing they're going to do well is block. They've always led in blocking, and this year is going to be no different than years past. We know about the offense. We know about the defense. The word that we'll be keying on for Jarrett Elliott in this group is speed. We'll talk about that throughout the match this evening. They'll play two matches across this format tonight and tomorrow as we take a look at the impact players for tonight's match. Impact player for Kansas is Jenny Mosier, who's a grad transfer from, from UCLA, and she's already and will continue to be a huge factor for the Jayhawks' success this year. And for Texas, it's Logan Eggleston. She was last week's Offensive Player of the Week, and as a junior outside hitter, she is taking on this leadership role. Boy, we're excited to be here. First of two matches coming your way these two days. Kick things off. Kansas, Texas, we come back. Home, Texas Volleyball's new home for this fall 2020 season. Just right off of I-35, bustling the Irwin Center. 1,500 fans allowed, expected to be in here. We are courtside for this, the second weekend of conference-only play for Texas. They kick things off on the road against Oklahoma, a 3-0, 3-1 victory. Those numbers you see, yes, there is an ABCA ranking coming out weekly. Texas, number one in the country. Kansas, number nine. They kick their season off against Baylor. Won in straight sets. First day and then they won the opener. 3-2, lost 3-0 in the second one. And it's a very interesting wrinkle in how this conference schedule is going to play out. Two matches, back-to-back -back days. It's definitely going to be interesting and, and a challenge for everybody to try to figure teams out and scout them the second day. For Texas, starting with Jenna Gabriel, Asia O'Neill, Brian Butler, Nalani Yosia, Molly Phillips, Logan Eggleston, and Morgan O'Brien on the floor. O'Brien, new face if you're watching Texas volleyball for the first time. Transfer from Illinois, a grad student here at the University of Texas. Texas block, can't keep it in bounds, but Stay with O'Brien, what does she bring to the Texas squad? You know, I think she brings a lot of experience, obviously having the experience at the University of Illinois, and just, she's a poised player that I love the way she plays the game. She can pass, she can play defense, and kind of do it all. And that black Pedro jersey, so coming on and playing a huge position for Texas. Mosier Ferris, Langs, Nielsen, Schultz, Crawford, and El Nadi on the floor for Kansas. Molly Schultz, a freshman from Rockford, Minnesota, will serve. Knotted up at two apiece. Out to the big arm of Logan Eggleston. You had mentioned already named the Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, second team All-American last year, now in her junior season. Man, and Logan, she had a lot of responsibility last season. I think it's just going to change a lot this year with being a captain, playing six rotations, you know, with the loss of Kaya White. pass on the serve right into the middle for Asia O'Neill. 
You mentioned McKay White. That's really the big name that Texas does not have returning from last year, a team that went 23-4, and 15-1 and one in Big 12 play, split the conference title with Baylor. One serve out of bounds. But you go back to the captaincy of Logan Eggleston, and she said to coach, I don't like the way that things ended last year. Obviously, this is going to be a very unique year for Coach Elliott in his 20th season as the NCAA tournament. We're going to play that in the spring. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait a bit. <laughs> but Texas ending their season. Five-set loss to Louisville. And now an upperclassman, Eggleston. Figures to be a huge part of what Texas is going to do. Moving all around the court, too. You mentioned all six rotations. And, and, and this is the speed that you kind of hinted to at the beginning of, of the show. You know, we are going to see some fast offense to the pins, which is a lot different than what Texas has done in years past. So much for us to talk about. I'm glad that we get two consecutive days. All gets through the Texas block. Trying to get a swing out of that. It's sent back from Skyler Fields. Yeah, that's a tough move when, when the ball is kind of coming from behind your head and you can't really see the block. That's the one she wants to swing high, skip hands, and try to just keep that ball in a good position. Graduate player Jenny Moser. Transfer over from UCLA. Back to attack from Eggleston. I'm wrong and out of bounds. Let's go back to speed after we look at Ray Bouchard. You had mentioned for Texas, what have you seen in years past that figures to be different with this group? Well, they they usually set a little bit higher, a little bit slower offense to the just to the outside. Such physical players that can hit at a high level, but that's kind of what it was. But it's interesting, Coach Elliott said that it's really more about Jenna and Jenna Gabriel and getting that feel and that rhythm and running this offense the way they wanted to run it. And that's what she's been able to do just now. The junior setter from Honolulu, Hawaii. Point to make it all go goes out to the left side there, which is where we will see Skylar Fields, an adjustment for her as well this season. Yeah, and that's different. She was playing on the right last year, but she could play anywhere, and she did in club. She kind of played on the left and right, and she's a very versatile player, so uh, the transition on the left isn't that difficult for her to make. And that, the Texas defense we talked about, one of the best teams historically over the last decade plus doing it defensively. And that was all Gabriel there. She got that with her right hand. She kind of took a took a look back at the other side of the court when she blocked that ball. It's five foot eight too. Hey, she's got plenty of help out there. Brian Butler, Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, is O'Neill serves. If there's one thing that we've seen with Texas, you go back to last year, years past, and really the opening weekend as well, serving. What's the key? What does this Texas staff want to see when they're serving the ball? Well, you know, they want to see pace with position. And, you know, that's that's the key is putting it where you want it to go, but you have to serve with some pace. And even Coach Elliott said, hey, we're not telling them just go back and pop the ball in. We're not going to do it. So they're going to have some misses. We're going to take some chances because when you get on runs, it's a big, big advantage. 479 career wins here at the University of Texas for Jarrett Elliott. It's 105 losses, 22 seasons overall. As a head coach. That ball called off of Texas. And it looks like Coach Elliott thinking about that green challenge card. Yeah, looks like yeah, he is going to challenge it. All right, this is where you get to take us through. Challenges. We talked so much about them the last couple of weeks. They've switched around. It's still the challenge system that we see. But how has it changed a little bit this year? Well, they've packaged a few things together. When you look at the, the challenges, they can call a touch, an in-out, or an up-down on this play right here. And normally, you'd have to be specific what is that call? Now they've packaged it all together. So it could be any number of things. They, the refs just want to make the right call, and that's why they put those all in the same. Uh, that really the emphasis, getting it right 
But what we've seen in years past, and we've talked about it when we do games, is that you can go back and look through the whole sequence, and maybe you're looking for a tips, but you see fingers into the net or something that could change that call. Ultimately, it's all about getting it right. That's what right. do you see here? Well, let's see. Oh, that's a sideline call, so we might need... That angle may be in? May maybe. That's a, that's a... I mean, I think so. So they did call it in. It wasn't called off of... Texas, as I had said, initially the ball ruled in. That is what is being challenged. Morgan O'Brien was kind of right there on the sideline with that play. She was pretty convinced. And that's why Jared Elliott got off the bench with the card. So we'll see. Ball stays as called on the floor. So confirmed 8-8. We take a look one more time. This is probably best angle. I don't know there. <laughs> they were looking yeah. out. Yeah. But it doesn't matter what we saw. That's right. That's what they're seeing on the screen. And uh, the down ref getting it right. And moving on. So Texas uses their first challenge. They'll have two more. Kansas will serve. Kennedy Ferris put it in play. Great finish from Rachel Langs, the junior middle blocker. And you're going to see that starts with the serve. Now they're they're changing the passing pattern here a little bit, moving Skylar Fields to the right. Normally they stack in this rotation. Trying to change some things to get Morgan O'Brien in the middle of the court passing. Phillips is sent back trying the other side, and not too many players can do what we just saw from Fields, right? No. She, she had to make an adjustment, kind of got her feet there and just hit the ball over the net, but that, that's because they stayed in that rotation. So you had Phillips on the left, Fields back on the right, which changed a little bit, but that was a, pass, that was a product of the pass, not anything else. They wanted to get O'Brien in the middle of the court. So Skyler Fields will sit down. Yolanda Yosia, the freshman from Torrance, California, another new face. One of four freshmen for Texas. What does she bring to this group? Well, you know, I think she's she's a player that she can rip that jump serve. And we talked to Coach Elliott about that earlier, and he was like, I'm just trying to get her confidence with it. Just go ahead and blast it, because that's what she does well. She can play defense and pass, and this is what I'm talking about with the back row. They are just so much better. And right now you've got those those two in the in the court. Just when they can pass the ball and pass perfectly, it's going to be hard to stop. You've always had the offensive weapons if you're Texas. If you follow this team, that's really been the book. You talk about passing. Can you get in system? Can you get good passes? And you're saying you look at this group, that's one area where they're going to be really good. No question. Seeing the defense that you couple that with, and there's a reason why this team, number one in so many fans in, those that follow the game high on it. And you're going to see that ball was set a little bit close to the net. The hitter didn't have a lot of room to go, and they just surrounded the ball. Wilson, the setter for Kansas, out of system in that sequence. Get under that one and try the left side. I have a feeling that number 44 jersey that we see for Texas, the Libro, Morgan O'Brien, a lot of sequences going to come off of her arms. Well, and it's not just the dig, it's not just the ability to get it off the ground, it's, it's a perfect dig. And then Jenna Gabriel's able to run the offense. Great pedigree at Illinois as well. The team that's had great success in the Big Ten. Tight to the net, but tipped over. Some creativity. Smart play on a, on a set that wasn't quite perfect, so she sees the opening on the court. All the way to the other side. Gabriel going to Eggleston. Led the team attacking wise in both matches. They played 17 kills, first match of the season, and 18 
in the second. As Kansas will take a timeout. So we're underway, the first of two matches, Texas against Kansas here in Austin at the Irwin Center. More action when we come back. We've talked about them thus far. Skyler Fields, the reigning Big 12 Freshman of the Year, is back. Breon Butler, the big defensive presence in the middle. All Big 12 selection last year. And obviously, Logan Eggleston, two-time All-American and honorable mention as a freshman last year, a second teamer. Plenty of complimentary pieces for this Texas team pick to win the Big 12. Once again, 13th time in program history. And the 10th consecutive year that they've been picked to do such. Going to scramble there. Double contact call. Coach Elliott off the bench once again. He's going to argue that that was a block touch. His captain will head over, talk with the up official. I did not have the first contact. Ever, so I had this first contact. And she He's explaining why it's two, two contacts. I'm going to say, if it weren't for the plexiglass, we could be in this conversation <laughs> right here in front of us. And again, he's saying that it's a block move to the ball. Even though it was just with one hand, he wants it to be a block move, which counts as, you know, you still have three plays. She can still play the ball again. But he says it's a double. So touches. that snaps the run. Five ball run that Texas had been on. The back row swing for Kansas. And that's an interesting player that made that swing number 17 in blue, Aya El Nade, a freshman from Cairo, Egypt. Love what Coach Passar said. Tell us the recruiting story as to how she got to Lawrence. It's such a good story. I guess uh, they were out in the World Championship watching another player play and then saw her playing and she was standing next to, I guess, a player that was 6'10". Well, they said the arm was booming. Yeah, right, right, right. And he said, well, I don't, I don't want another small hitter. That's it. But she was standing next to a player that was 6'10". And then they realized, okay, she, maybe she's not as small as we thought she was. She's 5'11". She can absolutely bang it. Had said that she had been getting a lot of just offers, unsolicited, saying scholarship-wise, hey, come play for us. But Coach Bouchard really wanted to have her on campus and try to establish a relationship, see if the fit was right. Ended up being such, and now she is joining the Jayhawks. Went 9-17 and 17 last season, 5-11 and 11 in Big 12 play. Finishing sixth, this, that national team. And I'm going to wager that number 19 yeah. is probably the 6-10 player, but... I How about that? Right. Pretty neat story. Story though for Kansas, they did not qualify for the NCAA tournament last year. That's two consecutive seasons for a team who really had a great run in the Big 12. What was the story for Kansas last season? Well, there was a lot going on for Kansas last season, and you know, they lost to the assistant coach. They had some things happen with players and movement yeah, around, Kansas. but now they have they've reloaded, really. They have 10 new players. They've got three transfers, 10 freshmen, and you know, they're counting on a lot of them to, to produce this year. Chris Bouchard, 23 seasons at Kansas, 36th overall, their first losing season since 2008. Last in the Big 12, you see in all of those categories, and that really, the aberration, not the norm for the program that he has established. Yeah, that was a tough, tough year for them, but like I said, I mean, I think, you know, Mosier, we're looking at a lot of experienced players that came in from other programs that are helping lead their freshmen along. And they, he said they have great chemistry, excellent leadership, and just a lot of pieces that were missing last year they've been able to replace, and now they're, they're playing at a, a really high level. How about the play there from Jenna Gabriel? We talked with Coach Elliott, and he said for Gabriel, the next level is going to be recognizing those opportunities, knowing where the defense is goes with the dump there. Well, and that's what it is with setting. You can set the ball, you can run an offense, but man, the next level is really creating something, watching the block, knowing who's with you, knowing when you can dump, and that's exactly what she's getting better and better at. Texas keeping just a little bit of distance, up three. And you go on a rally here with Eggleston at the service line. And we'll try for Fields, easy up. 
For the Jayhawks back row. That is long and out of bounds. Alnade on the swing. That's a nice play by the Jayhawks with running her out of the back row. It was just a little bit behind, behind her on that ball, and that's why that ball went out of bounds. You talk serving for Texas, and you talk when you have Eggleston. Coach Elliott had talked about going on these runs. Is this where Texas needs to see something like that? Absolutely. She, look at you. <laughs> it's just listening to you guys. <laughs> well, I mean, we've talked about this last year. You know, she's got this a kind of funky hybrid serve. It's, it's kind of a cross between a traditional jump serve and a traditional float, so it's got a little action on it, and it's, it's with a ton of pace. And for those of you at home, go on the other side of the net and try to get under that. And you'll see exactly what my partner's talking about. That dig sent back over Texas to try. O'Neal sent back Gabriel. Longhorns with their largest lead to take in on the block. So we saw Texas offensively try the back row twice, left and the right, but Kansas gets the point. Well, what, what you're seeing from, tech, from Kansas is they're doing a nice job reading the play. Some of it's scheming when they know it's a perfect pass, but their block has caused all of this trouble for Texas right now. They're in the right spots. They're reading the, the ball perfectly. They were talking the great defense for Texas, three blocks, but Kansas already with two in this opening set. You know, I think they've, they've done a nice job of knowing where the ball's gonna go, when the ball's passed perfectly, you know, sending two with a kneel, then when it's out of system, they were able to send two on the outside. So Kansas doing a nice job with their block. That's why their defense is playing well right now. So mentioned for Texas, 10th consecutive year picked as the favorite to win the Big 12 from 2011 to 2019, 136 wins, eight losses in conference play. They have two perfect conference seasons, 2013 and 2017. Kansas right in there behind Baylor, Iowa State, Oklahoma, and then TCU, Texas Tech, K-State, and West Virginia. So the schedule will be you play every opponent twice. Yep. And you travel or you host them at home, but give me your preseason, well, you know, now that we're in the season, scouting report on the Big 12. Well, you know, playing everybody back to back is is interesting. You're scouting a little bit differently. You're preparing during the week differently. And then you have an opportunity to say, OK, what did we do wrong immediately? What could we do differently? And how can we match up differently the next night? So within the conference, it's going to be interesting to see how how some of these teams flush, flush out, especially in the middle, where traditionally you're playing one team and then playing another team, it could be an advantage for some some teams, teams that are better at scouting, better at uh, recovering. I know that's one thing that Coach Bouchard said after their Baylor win was just getting their kids in a in a good place to win the next night. And that's that's a challenge. That's a challenge once you win a match to be like, OK, we have to bring it to the same level the next night and even better. Look exactly at Kansas to that point, Coach Bassard saying, which we wish we could have flipped the results. Yep. Lost on Friday, won on Saturday. He said he really felt that they caught Baylor off guard, winning the opener, but then the adjustments yep. were the difference. And these teams have played back-to-back -back or two days in a row, but it's never usually against the same opponent, especially a conference opponent that you know pretty well. Right. So Coach Bouchard sensing Little moment here in this opening set. Texas still with the lead at three. Cut that to two. After some defense, number nine, Caroline Crawford, six foot three middle blocker. So Kansas doing a nice job serving Eggleston so she can't be an option out of the back row. So they serve her, get Gabriel off the net, and they're able to scheme and block Skylar Fields because they know where the ball's going. Kansas now with a 4-0 run. And Salima, we haven't hit on it yet, but for this Texas team, when things get interesting, playing at home usually, you could dig into that Gregory oh, crowd. Absolutely, and now you can you can barely hear it, right? There's people spread all over the arena, but there's not many, and it's a big arena, so they have to find their own energy and find their own way to come back. Yep, the 1,500 comprised of season ticket holders and then family and friends of both programs that are here at the Irwin Center. So no students, 
No, no swim team no. that's in their speedos <laughs> two centimeters from the court. The band right on top of you. Definitely will look forward to getting back to Gregory whenever we can. Riley Heinrich, number 19, inserted in white. She came in to serve. Freshman from Georgetown, Texas. You see the difference. Gregory a little older, but it's got plenty of character. It's got lots of character, and it is a tough place to play. And this is everybody spread out, and you know, they're here, but it's, it's a totally different environment. Right, and I think everybody just happy to be playing, happy to be here, and happy that there are even fans. We'll be back here tomorrow. Second matchup against these Jayhawks. Coverage starts at 7 Central. Again, watch it live on the ESPN app as well. So overall format for the season, we had alluded to it. If you haven't followed it home, the Big 12, one of the conferences that is playing, along with the ACC, the SEC, and the Sun Belt. What will happen then in the spring is in late April, there will be an NCAA tournament. 48 teams. The season, so you can see here, yeah, they're playing in April. It's going to be everything that you just talked about. But right now in the Big 12, they're playing all their teams. So they're playing their entire season this fall. So it's going to be really interesting to see how they prepare in the spring for the NCAA tournament. So everybody else, they're going to play their seasons. They're going to have their, you know, starting January 22nd because um, they haven't been playing this fall. So it'll be really interesting to see how the teams this fall transition into the spring and then what that looks like for them. For Came the on top of the show, said adaptability, flexibility, and the uncertainty. Obviously, so many things could change by then. The schedule as of now, November 13th will be the last time that Texas plays, November 20th the last time that Kansas plays, and then possibly do not know how they're going to pick up in January. Those are things that we talked about with both coaches, possibly scheduling regionally, possibly yep. scheduling conference opponents that wouldn't count yep. towards what that AQ in the big, there's lots of things <laughs> they could go into. But as far as what they're playing for, there will be a conference champion there that will be. get the berth in the NCAA. That's exactly right. And as for the rest of it, Coach Elliott said it best, I'm done guessing. I got to take it one day at a time. Texas trying to take it one point at a time and close out this opening set. They held Kansas at arm's length. Heinrich is, came in and spurred this run from Georgetown, Texas, just up the road. Texas block. That's a nice swing by, Z by Zabo. That's the transfer from Nebraska. And she has come in and she's got experience. She's played in big matches. She's been around the game for a long time and is really doing a nice job for Kansas so far. Aneska Zabo, you see number eight in blue. Was that Nebraska from 2017 to 19? Academic All Big Ten. And 18 and 19, played some beach as well. He's a top ranked recruit, 34th in the country coming out of high school. 10 kills, four blocks in their last match against oh Baylor. Goodness. That one just long. So Kansas with some life. Crawford to serve. Had a great look there down the line. The face of Breon Butler. She saw that ball blocked and it falls inbounds. Well, and that's again a product of a tough serve. 
There was nowhere else for Gabriel to go at that point. Shut the ball to the field, and they had a double ball. Wow, Texas was sure on their side that that was in. Jenna Gabriel was right at the official. And I think those are the moments where you got to keep your team under control, keep them calm, and the game gets tight, and they want to call, and everyone gets a little bit frazzled, and I think it was a nice idea to call a timeout right here, we'll regroup a little bit. Well, the, the Texas coaching staff wouldn't want to see what we're seeing. You've already used one challenge that was not successful. That looks clearly in, but you go back, Kansas equaling Texas, four blocks to four. That block that fell in was big. And then obviously one missed there, but just a one point advantage for Texas. They lose Micaiah White, but return Skyler Fields, Butler, Eggleston, all Big 12 selections last year. And it's really hard to, to break it down and say, hey, this is a national title contender because the national title's a long way off, but this is a team that is clearly the elite within the country and the conference. Without a question. And, and you know, what we talked about a little bit earlier was just being more than an offensive team, being more than an offensive and blocking team. I think with the addition of Morgan O'Brien, uh, the addition of the other defensive players, that that's just going to elevate them to another level. They can pass and play defense and run this faster offense to the pins. They're going to give teams fits. Well, to your point, you see number eight in white, Sydney Peterson, who donned the Libro jersey for all of last year, has now shifted over, comes yep. in as a DS, along with O'Brien, who now is the Libro. So you talk passing, you talk ball control. Texas trying to get more of that. They need some more ball control. Missed one there, had a chance to put them one point away, but that ball was called out off of Butler. So what does Kansas do? The timeout breaks the rhythm. Service air from Crawford will make it set point for the Longhorns. That'll do it. So Texas takes the opening set. New gigs here at the Frank Irwin Center, but same result, looking very comfortable in front of their and What these players are playing for, we've seen Texas as their student athletes across the course of the summer, really the volleyball team, talk about what's important to them. You see Black Lives Matter on the front, we are one on the back, what the messaging is, from the conference, the schools, and supporting these student athletes is so important right now. Well, it's, it's so important that they feel their voices are, are being heard. And you'll see this on Kansas stand, stand for, for equality. equality. And it's, it's super important, and it's the young generation that wants to use their platform to say, hey, look, we matter, Black Lives Matter, we support our teammates, and everyone's kind of in it together. We'll talk more about that throughout the course of this set as we look back at set number one, Texas taking 25 to 22. It was good, it got tight. It's 23-22 at one point, but Longhorns good. Logan Eggleston leading the way with six kills. You know, and it was really the offense that started him off early for Texas, and then it was the Kansas defense that picked up to make the game a little bit tighter. But towards the end, Texas served a little bit tougher and was able to get their offense rolling and finish it out. One thing I think has been very impressive from Kansas, the four blocks that we've had thus far, we've seen. You know, and Coach Richard said that he was, he was thinking about this and how he was gonna block. Is he gonna scheme? What is he gonna do? Watching them and scouting them. So I think Kansas is doing a really nice job of scouting, serving. The serving goes along with the block. So they're serving to get certain people out, get them a little bit out of system so they know where the ball's going. Texas with 15 kills, Kansas with nine in the opening set. Number 17, you see El Nadi for Kansas. She was their leader with three kills. Tried to go a lot to their transfer, Jenny Mosier, 
led the squad with 12 swings, just two kills, hit .083. .091 was the hitting percentage for Kansas in the opening set. Texas hitting 171. Outside of what we've already talked about, what we have seen, what have you seen in that opening set for both teams needs to get better or that they're just keep doing what you're doing? Well, you know, for, for Texas, they need to stay calm, stay poised, and make sure they're passing the ball well. They have the people to pass the ball well, and Gabriel distributing the ball so Kansas can't predict where the ball's going. And for Kansas, they need to handle the ball a little bit better, pass the ball so they can run their offense and get Texas a little bit more off balance. Tyra Dennings, Liam Rockwell. First time calling volleyball for both of us in quite a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> but we're happy to be here, socially distant, have our own enclosures. If you've watched any of the NBA, set up pretty similar to what you've seen down in that bubble. We're not too far away. We're not too far away. Still see one another. Behind the plexiglass, which is kind of weird. So here we are. So this is the setup. So here we are behind the plexiglass. Got, I got my own desk, though, so I, I like that. This is the most space I have ever had. Feeling good about this. Across any sport, <laughs> any venue, it's spacious here at the Irwin Center. Let's, let's get into that. We talked pre-match, you and I, for a player, for a coach. What's the difference in playing in a huge venue like this? Well, it's there's a lot of spatial differences when you're used to playing in a tighter arena with the fans kind of on top of you. Um, it's even reference points from the, the ceiling to the, the, the fans, and it, it makes a little bit of a difference. It's very different atmosphere. For Texas, it's nice to be able to play in here this fall in this season because generally as they move forward into the tournament, they're playing in bigger venues, and certainly as they hope to get to the final, the championship match, uh, they'd be in a bigger venue. So it's a nice thing to practice in, but it's a totally different atmosphere. Still TBD where that may be. We've heard some things, but zip. <laughs> Was supposed to be played in Omaha was where the semifinals and the final were scheduled for this season. That obviously being pushed out to the spring, but that's what's at stake in this conference play. An automatic qualifying bid, regardless of what happens in the spring season, if you are to win the Big 12. Texas scrambling. Texas doing a nice job covering the ball, but it, it's really Kansas. Kansas ball, paying attention to where the ball's gonna go and being in the right spots. There's Milana Yosia, freshman. DS. Showed you Texas in their recruiting rankings, but you talked about that is where the points of emphasis were, at least in the bodies that are here on campus right now, is those DS Negro positions. Really trying to get the ball to the center to get it to those athletic pins or into the middle. That's it. Truly really a simple game, right? It really is. <laughs> Eggleston to serve. Back row swing from Mosher. Three ball for Texas. Big arms going at it in this rally. Just getting off the arms of O'Brien, pressed up on the court and out of bounds. 
tell you, that was Nielsen. She was digging all of those balls that, that Logan Eggleston was just blasting at her, and she was just getting in the way of it, but she won that rally for, the, for Kansas. Sarah Nielsen, number four from Glen Ellen, Illinois, senior at 5'11". Set her in this offense. No slouch defensively as well. No, and I think it's it's fortunate Kansas has an experienced setter coming back. Like we said, we they have a lot of transfers and freshmen, but to have your setter be a senior and in that position, it's a huge advantage because they're running the offense and they're leading that team, and she does a really nice job. Big swing from Skyler Fields. Sophomore from Mo City, Texas. Laying that left side. How big of an adjustment is that for her this you know, year? It's it's a little bit, it's different, right? It's a different flight of the ball. You've got more time. You've got to wait a little bit longer, even though they're speeding it up. But I think, like I said earlier, Skylar Fields has the experience. She's played on the left. She's played on the right. And I think she's really comfortable over there as well. So it's just adjusting to the out-of-system balls. And that's something that Coach Elliott said. She can run those tempo balls and everything's perfect. That's going to be her thing to work on the most over the course of the season a ball that's passed off the net really waiting being smart with her swings hitting high because she touches where are we at almost 11 feet she is up there so uh, i've never touched that high never, no. <laughs> <laughs> played in all 27 matches 98 sets last season 246 kills hit 337 was third on the team 90 blocks as well abca all southwest region Southwest Region Freshman of the Year, VolleyballMag.com, all-freshman team, and Big 12 all-freshman player. She had a phenomenal freshman year. I mean, I was I was so impressed with how she played and how she kept her composure, and she was solid, someone they could count on night in and night out. Serve number 17, Coach Elliott and the staff feel they have a great one-two punch. Eggleston and Fields, two different looks, two different things that Gabriel can do with the ball. And then there's that option, too, going into the middle. That ball catches the antenna. And they set this ball. It's kind of a, a hanging one ball. That was almost a two ball, really, in the middle, where it wasn't a traditional quick set. They just let Butler go up and get that ball and hit as high as she can on a ball that's just not a traditional ball set in the middle of the court. Fields will sit down. You'll see it comes in to serve. Coach Elliott was great when he talked about this serve right here. Said the nerves were getting to her initially. He said, hey, just go back to Redondo Beach. She's from Torrance, California, played at Redondo Union, but get your mind in that place and no problem, right? Yeah, I mean, close your eyes. And she's like, well, yeah, I can do it there. <laughs> it's a little different story when you're on the court, when the lights come on. But she's, she's getting more comfortable even right now. She's ripping a couple serves here. Not at an eight apiece. Schultz with the serve. Gabriel will try Eggleston. Both sent back, first from the left, then from the right. Phillips over there defensively. And what you're gonna see out of the Texas block is really their ability to press over the net. They are pressing Eggleston on the first one. And then Phillips, and you'll see Butler come and finish. They talked a lot about finishing their hands. I know that's something that Coach Elliott said. He wants them to be a little bit better with their hands on contact, and finishing back into the court. Talk that Texas defense, Molly Phillips, sophomore, six foot five from Mansfield, Texas, the middle blocker. Played all 27 matches. Her inaugural campaign, but she's a huge part of what Texas wants to do defensively. How much of an art is that, that great shot that we just saw, pressing over the net and then to get back and not hit the net? That's, a, that's what you do. That's, yeah, okay. that's volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> it's that <But> easy. <laughs> it's, not, it's not easy, that's for sure. That is for sure. They just make it look easy. They do. 
That was, to your point, something Coach Elliott had talked about with us and looking at the men's game and what they do with their fingers. And that's really the highest level you're talking about in terms of blocking is just those small directionalized hit balls that you can get down and get in bounds. And then your block is really good. And then when you have players that are as physical as the players at Texas, so you can translate that, right? It, it can, you can do that. You can finish and not just get block, touch, block touches, but terminate. So ending plays. Is there a team, Salima, you know, really, if you look over the last decade plus, that consistently gets the level of athleticism in their, their players that Texas does? Well, I mean, I think, I think there's always the teams like, you know, Stanford, the Penn State, Nebraska, Wisconsin, the different, different types of athletes, you know, and everybody has a different vibe on their team. So I think, you know, Texas ha has a certain style of play, but they're doing a nice job of getting athletes that can play and play the entire game. Think back to that group that won the national championship, a Bailey Webster, mm -hmm. Haley Eckerman, I'm down to Cat Bell and really just down the line, Micaiah White. But really the emphasis, like we have talked about, speed, precision, and utilizing, being able to utilize that athleticism at its best. That's exactly right. Anybody I left out? I went through a couple, oh, a couple a names. There's a lot. There's a lot, yeah. <laughs> Who's the most athletic player you think you've ever seen? It doesn't have to just be at Texas. Oh, jeez. You gonna make somebody mad here? No, 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 no. I mean, internationally it was Maria Luis that played at Cuba, but um, there's Sarah Palmer, coached her. Part of the national championship team. Absolutely. The Fantastic Libro. Fantastic Libro, that's right. How about when you look at the game right now, who are some of the most explosive? Who, who are the players that you say, hey, if that player's playing, I need to watch? Oh, man. There's, man you're catching me, catching me off guard here. There's a lot. There's so many. I mean, Caitlin Horde from Penn State. She is probably one of the best middles I've seen in a long time. She's, she's fun to watch. But, of course, a couple of players here on Texas' team. And yeah, there's a lot. That was a smart swing. Seeing the block, seeing a ton of line to attack, she just goes up and cuts that ball and clips the line. Kansas been able to do enough to stay within distance, but not able to put together that big run, or even a smaller run to try to get out and build some space in front of Texas. Yalciana Presley. Yeah, Santa Presley, absolutely. That'll be a good one. Kansas, as mentioned, they did play Baylor already. Snuck out a 3-2 victory. I think that opened some eyes probably when you looked at the opening weekend. So very capable. And the point I think that you had made it with this back-to-back -back format, it's really going to be a lot about adjustments. It is. It's scouting adjustments, knowing knowing your opponent, you know your opponent's coaches, and how what they're going to do next go around and how to make those adjustments too, anticipating what they're going to do. That ball catching the antenna. One thing that Coach Elliott brought up as well, the lack of travel as much as before getting to play two matches in a row. We'll talk more about that. Texas with a four-point advantage. Back row, Logan Eggleston for the long haul. Number two here at the Frank Irwin Center came on top of the show, talked impact players, and you were right. They're having an impact. Well, they are. They're both leading their team in kills. Uh, Mosier's doing a, you know, she's having a tough time getting around the Texas block and putting the ball away, but they're setting her a ton. I mean, she has 25 swings, and the next highest amount of swings is 12. So they, they're leaning on her, they're counting on her, and they want her to get her, her kills, and she's doing the best she can. So both of them leading in kills, leading in attempts, and that's what that's what each team needs. Eggleston has 29 swings, Skyler Field 16. She'll get another there, but Kansas defense has been good. 
Not there in time for the tap over from Brian Butler. I like that smart play by Butler. The ball's just a little too low and she's a little bit late. So she uses that IQ to just kind of cut that ball and chop it in the middle of the court. Smart play by Butler. So for Brian Butler, it really feels like she is just scraping the surface in terms of what she is capable and what we'll see her do. What are the next levels for her? Man, I, I tell you what, she can play at the highest level. She is so physical, but smart and getting smarter, expanding her game a little bit more like you saw. So she's not just, just cranking on the ball. She, she's seeing the game, seeing the defense and opening up things for her. And Fields, same thing. I mean, a beautiful spot, beautiful placement by Fields. So they're getting, because Kansas is getting a ton of touches right now when they're swinging, so they're slowing the ball down. So right now, Texas making adjustments and saying, hey, they're super deep on defense. Let's see if we can tip the ball. And huge advantage that they have her out of the back row so she can attack from every area of the court. In serve receive all the time, so both players significant impact for both teams. Well, for Eggleston, Coach Elliott talking not just about the evolution on the court, but more responsibility just as a student athlete, a young woman. She's the head of their student council, really involved in the messaging, Black Lives Matter, what's happened social justice wise with these student athletes. We saw Texas, the football team, the volleyball team, all the Texas student athletes issuing a list of actionable items that they wanted to see change on the campus. She's a captain here for this team, so moving into more of a leadership role, but really making that jump from a talented underclassman to now, hey, this can be your team. Take the reins. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty cool, and it's, it's fun. That's the best part of coaching, is watching players mature and take those responsibilities and, and run with them. And they, they start off a little bit shy and unsure of themselves, and they grow into it. But it also takes a coach that believes in you, that buys in, and supports you. And I think that's what Coach Elliott says, I'm behind this 100%, um, and which, is, which helps them tremendously. We talked passing there, that was tough for Gabriel. Texas gets it over, O'Brien will try for Fields. See if the Jayhawks can find a run. Defensively, numbers good. Five blocks to Texas is six. It's Elise McGee to serve. Had that pivotal service error in that first set. You remember it was close. They cut it oh, yeah. to 23-22. Timeout for Texas. That gave them set point. That's it. And that, those are crucial moments where you have to keep your focus and say, you know, right now, let's just go on a little run, maybe take a little bit off of it and trust our defense because they've been playing fantastic defense at this point. Jenna Gabriel serving for Texas. See if she can try to take Texas home. That'll help right there. Great set out to Skyler Fields. Not just her seventh kill of the match. And a smart swing off the top of the block. And that's what we were talking about earlier. That ball that's out of system that she has to wait for, being more patient with it, smart with it, not just hitting right into the belly of the block. Just to button up Eggleston, you talk about finding your voice. You find your voice as you get older, you get more comfortable. That I think something that Coach Elliott, this staff, this university has done a good job to let these players utilize student athletes, their voice across everything that has gone on, going on societally as well. Uh, it's, and it's important because if you don't have that support, you know, you don't know what you're going to do. You're going to get pushed back and, and you're not going to feel confident doing that. And it's, it's really fortunate that they have the support to be able to do those things. Had read a great quote from Ricky Williams early on in the fall where he had said, I was afraid to speak out back in my days because maybe there was repercussions from my coaches from the university. So to now see players like Katie Stern, the Logan Eggleston, across these different groups, be able to speak out and have the support, the messaging on the uniforms. Obviously that's one part of it, but action items are Big conversation as well. This team, Texas as a university, their student athletes, the big emphasis has been on voting. Yeah. Big election is coming up. Every student athlete on this Texas volleyball squad registered to vote. 
Yeah, and you know what's really neat? We've seen on social media now all the volleyball coaches are, are doing a little challenge. They're challenging one another. Hey, has your team all registered to vote? And now they're posting, our team is vote, registered to vote. And it's it's been a cool process to watch it start at places like Texas and, and then trickle down to other, other schools. We'll have more on social justice and how that conversation has evolved for the Texas volleyball team in between the second and third sets. But an interesting wrinkle and a great thing that Texas has done, and they've done, I believe, across all the Big 12, they've given the students a day off yes. voting, which is on November 4th. Well, Texas has to play Baylor that very next day, but so important, and really something you see, I think it should be a national holiday. Everybody should have a day off, be able to go out there and Absolutely. vote. But something that they have done, supporting the voices of these student athletes, you'll see in that piece, if you come here and support me as an athlete, or you watch at home, that hey, we're more than just what you see on the court. Smart high swing, skipping off the top of the block. I think when you're 5'11 and you're going up against Phillips and Butler, that's what you have to do, and that's a fantastic swing. The side out percentage, that's something that Coach Elliott has emphasized to us. What's the good side out percentage you want to see as a coach? Well, if you're signing out above 65%, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna win some matches, you know. And I think that's that's where you're targeting is that that range, uh, and and higher. You know, at one point he said, I think last weekend they signed it out 100% in one of the, one of the sets against uh, Oklahoma, and uh, that's, <laughs> that's perfect, right? That's uh, yeah, it's perfect. That's every time they serve a seed, they sign it out. So. Texas right now, 59.5% on their side out. Kansas, 47.8. Longhorns now three points away into the middle. There's that, that hanging one ball again. This isn't fast and right on top of the net. It is just high, and she goes up one-on-one -on -one and can hit the ball wherever she wants and is fired up. Why is it called the one ball? Well, one, it goes back to old nomenclature, but uh, everyone calls something different, but it was traditionally it was one foot above the height of the net, so it was height and speed. So there were different names for sets based on speed and height above, and location on the net. So the higher the number, the higher off the net, which gives the defense more time to adjust? In theory, yes, in theory, yes, kind of, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Point for Texas is we talk speed, and speed really you can see run out of the middle, correct? You can see it out of the middle, but what we're seeing now is them running it out of the pins, out of the left sides, and that's something that's been a little bit different. They're running a faster offense to Eggleston, to Fields, to Phillips behind, and that puts a huge strain on the, on the defense and on the block on the other side of the net. Well, and who that onus falls upon is that player right there, number two, having one eye on the other side of the net and knowing where the defense is and where to go to with the ball. And that's what we talked about earlier, and Coach Elliott said she is, she's getting better and better at it, and that's why she's there and grabbed that, that spot and hung on to it. But she's grown as a leader, grown as a setter, but now getting even smarter and smarter as the year goes on. Texas five service errors to Kansas is three. First time since 1997, Texas has played in the Irwin Center. So probably safe to say, I don't know if any of these players were even born yet. Oh, geez, don't say that. <laughs> oh, don't even say that out loud. They hosted three matches here. What year is that? Yeah, yeah 97. Right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> they, they won against number 21, UCLA on September 12th, number 14, Texas A&M, and then number nine, Nebraska. They played here in 84, 86, 90, 96, and 97. Never a full season inside the arena in 94 played host to the NCAA Volleyball Championship in semifinal matches. And this traditionally the expansiveness you see at that level. But Texas looking comfortable at home. They 
close things out, 25 to 19. We've talked social justice for a long time, but these student athletes utilizing their voices to fall into that. And Coach Elliott had talked about this is a very important time for them. They are going to remember this, their relationship, and a different way to look at the world and try to affect change. You know, and, and everyone's learning and everyone is a part of it. That's, that's the best part about it is you have a lot of African-American volleyball players on the court and they have teammates that want to support them and understand. So there's lots of, of time to talk, lots of meetings where everyone's getting better at learning about one another and how to support each other in the, in the process. So it's, it's a neat time and it's, uh, it's an important time. Coach Bouchard, we talked to him about it as well, but creating that space, he talked about the diversity within their group as well, the first Muslim player that they have had yep. on their team. But getting a break, he said, one of the good things with COVID-19 was, hey, really a, a beat, catch my breath and our breath and to share and to develop these conversations. So then if we do come back and play the actual game that we all share and that we all love, that that falls in to the conversation as a huge part of it. And that's what you're seeing all across the country, not just here in this gym. See it across all of sports at WNBA, the NBA, their athletes pushing that conversation. But great to hear from these student athletes and what the importance is to them. To talk about what Texas has for this 2020 slash 2021 fall spring season, the offensive prowess. The back row passing and the blocking presence defensively. Evaluate those three categories for well, us. Well, they're doing a, a nice job, and I think that's where they want to be. You know, they have the amount of kills that they're looking for, certainly digs, and you can't see, you know, you don't have the passing stats here, but also with blocking. So I think they're hitting their markers early on. Their hitting percentage wasn't great, but their kills were set. That's what they want to do, and they want to attack at a high rate. For Kansas, they were resilient in the first set, got it to just one point, but couldn't get over the hump. In the second set, they're always about three to five points. What are the things happening on their side of the net? They can maybe push through to get that breakthrough. Well, continuing to do what they're doing with a tough serve, getting Texas just a little bit, not way out of system, but enough that they can determine where the ball's gonna go to create these block touches that they've been getting and some big defensive touches. These are the swings that are hard to stop. when. You have the block there, but you're still going over the top. It's very difficult to play because the defensive players are playing around the block. They're playing, they're playing off the block. But when you play a team like Texas, sometimes you have to be right behind the block and dig those hard driven balls. Coach Bouchard had talked about that in the past. You can stay more in a read. Now it's not the case with the two pins, the tempo that they have that they had seen in their scout for Texas thus far. He said if they win first ball contact, nobody's going to beat them. Tough. It's going to be really hard. Said wanted to serve them tough, serve them in, give their setters some options. And that's the passing that we're talking about. Look, you'll see as she flies in there to pass that short ball, and it is a perfect pass that Gabriel has the wherewithal to see where the block is and get O'Neal one-on-one in that situation. You'll see an AVCA Under Armour first team All-American player. USA Today preseason volleyball team. Max Preps first team All-American. Two sisters and three brothers. The Torrance, California product. There's that perfect pass by Peterson. And we haven't talked about her enough, but she's still back there making things happen, controlling the back row and creating that situation for Eggleston. Peterson has been so solid, and Coach Elliott said, you know, there's a lot of change, and 
Some more defensive players, but she has been just fantastic. Handling, handling it like a, a trooper and getting better. They're all pushing each other, and they're all getting better every day. 27 matches played last year as the Libro. Sydney Peterson, a junior from Iowa. But yes, how about that wrinkle that it wasn't something they expected with Morgan O'Brien. They just found out that, hey, she's going to grad school here. And Coach Elliott said he had reached out to the Illinois program, had noticed that she then put her name in the portal and reached out to O'Brien. And O'Brien said, wow, you know, what an honor that, that you would consider. And obviously things worked out. And now the graduate student is there donning that Libro jersey. But as you said, still a huge role for Peterson. And obviously plenty on the court for her to do and contribute for Texas defensively. You never have too many of those players, no, right? You really can't. Gabriel will try for Fields. Tipped off the block. Skyler Fields, nine kills. Match high is 13 from Logan Eggleston, but Skyler Fields now second most out of any player in the match. She's heating up a little bit. She took a monster swing a couple swings ago and now moving the ball around. So I think Fields is starting to get into, get into a groove. We were both watching there. <laughs> All right, so the deflection, and then there was a nice little glare up by the right. official hey. before the ruling came in. You know when it hits somebody on the way out the door. When you block up all and they get caught by it, they pretend like they don't. It was a good pause there, and something that we wouldn't get to see if we were at home. Some of our colleagues calling matches from home. We obviously have the benefit of being here, Texas, and all the staff and then everybody I'd like to give a big huge shout out to all of our colleagues as well that have worked tirelessly to put this together safety protocols in place so we can bring you some live volleyball action time out from kansas texas leading nine to four cheering on texas the number one ranked team in the country up two sets to none skylar fields big part of that nine kills on the match you know, in Skyler Fields, she does a nice job. This is what I talked about for her last year, just coming in as a freshman, super poised, and now she's smarter. She's hitting different shots, hitting high off the top of the block, through the block, tipping balls when she knows she has the opportunity, and I think that's why she's having success tonight. So match high, 13 kills for Eggleston. Second for Skylar Fields amongst all players with nine. They've gone her way 25 times, hitting even 200. Texas as a team hitting 266 to 400 in this third set. Texas thinking about a challenge. Gabriel's like, no, nope, I think they're right. Don't do it, coach. I just like watching. I have a great view of Brian Butler <laughs> looking at the up official every time. Now we see Fields move over to the right side. Some of that versatility for number five in white. It's a nice run. It's not a, it's not a high ball back there. It's a nice quick set. A nice start on that first step when the setter touches the ball. She gets on it pretty quick. And typical in the rotations field sits down. You'll see a in to serve. Oh, just grazing the tape. It's about as high of a toss on the serve as I can remember seeing in a while. Yeah, generally speaking, when you have a nice hard jump serve, you want to you want to jack that thing up there like at a full approach, like you're a hitter, and get on top of it. So a couple of miscues from Kansas. Double contact there. 
This is exactly what the Texas coaching staff wants to see when number 12 back there serving. Pressure from the freshman. That one's long and out of bounds. That's the heat you want. She created two opportunities, got two points. Just tough serve. And then just missed one long, but he's going to take those, roll the dice with that. When you have a tough serve, a tough jump serve, that's okay if you get a miss that way. Comes back with a perfect pass. Diving to keep that alive. Wow, great hustle on both sides of the net. The point goes the way of Mosier in Kansas. Excellent defensive effort on both sides. But Mosier sees everybody on their heels. Smart player, that's what we're talking about. That experience that she has brought into the Kansas program. I think just initially, it's a rally like that where you miss the loud crowd the most. Gregory crowd so tuned in to the game. And Absolutely. The gasps, the awes. Miscommunication there. That's a, a good block touch. High off the top of the block and then a missed opportunity. So fans making a little noise as Kansas making a little run. Coach Elliott up off the bench. Trying to calm his team down. 4-0 run for the visiting Jayhawks. Think a little perspiration on the court. This is a tough serve that she's bringing. It's kind of flat just over the top of the net and, and right in the scene between two players. That's what she's looking to do. Well, good thing Coach Bouchard considered El Nadi because you can tell she, oh, she can play. has a lot of potential to grow. We've already seen on the evening Make it 5 0. -oh. That's a tough miss by Butler. A set that may have been not quite as high as she'd like it, but that's a ball you still have to keep in bounds. So we have three fall sports going on here on the 40 acres in the Big 12 as well. The last one we haven't talked about soccer. Texas will host Kansas State next Friday, live here on LHN, October 9th. Starting at 5 Central, stream it on the go. ESPN app from anywhere. Tyler Denning, Salima Rockwell here, courtside. Not at Gregory Gymnasium, the Frank Irwin Center. And it is totally different, you know, different atmosphere. I know calling games in Gregory and it's hard to hear. I can't even hear myself talk. Oh, that is a loud place to play. Well, it's loud in here, but just because they have the music cranked up. Some good environment. Is this the second weekend of the volleyball season? Blocking has been good for Texas, one of the best teams in the country to do it. Seven blocks on the evening. This is where Coach Elliott wants to get better and better. He said the same thing last year. And having Phillips on the right is huge for them this year. So they have increased their blocking presence tremendously already, and they'll continue to do that as the season goes on. Texas historically dominated this series, 44 and five all time, 22 and one here in Austin. Kansas last winning in 2018 in Lawrence. Texas taking both matches last year and look to be in really good shape at the start of this third set up, two sets to none, but a 5-0 scoring run for the Jayhawks, some miscues by Texas, but a nice serving ace, El Nadi back there. To try to continue, try to cut into this Texas lead, standing at just two. Great effort. 
Schultz trying to go back to get it to keep it alive, but Molly Phillips ending the scoring run. That was a fantastic hustle. She almost got that ball high enough for someone to play over the net. Yeah, and this is, you see obviously from the lines and the key, the free throw line. This is the hoops court that's converted, just taped off. Which is different, at least for the Texas team, because they've had their own court laid out in Gregory Gym. And it's, you know, it can be a little distracting with all that going on. No distractions there. Match leader in kills, probably going to say that quite a bit. Watching Texas this year, 14th on the evening, Logan Eggleston. And that is the speed of the offense to the outside that Texas has been working on, and that's what it creates, a separation in the block that's impossible to the net. And this effort, fantastic touch, and a good effort there defensively. Gabriel and Milani Garcia. This third set, really the story of the other two. Kansas, right there. Right there, they're serving tougher. Kansas is being strategic. Right now they're going a little bit after Eggleston, trying to get her to handle the ball. Tough play. That ball was set way too close to the net, and Eggleston didn't really have anywhere to go. When really for Texas, it looks like in this third set, it has not been the norm for them to be in system. Seen it just a handful of times. So kudos to Kansas putting the pressure on. Could even it up with a point here. And they do just that. Kim Whetstone, the freshman from Kansas City, Kansas, number 10. Nine, two, run. AJ O'Neill will end that 4-0 portion of the scoring run. Richard Sophomore from South Lake, Texas. Family is in the building. You'd be familiar with Dad Jermaine from his playing days. The NBA. Right now, it's all Kansas. Is. They're doing a nice job hitting high off the hands there. Catching O'Neal just off her right hand, tooling that ball off the ball. Mosier, a team high 12 kills, hitting 211, but the team hitting 250 in this third set. Needing this one to extend the match. 15 all. Right there to O'Neal. That's, that's what they need. That's the, the pass they need, the perfect pass right in the middle of the court. You'll see Kansas block was scheming two to the outside, left O'Neal one-on-one to go high over the top. Coach Ellie saying of Asia O'Neal, she's becoming a major offensive weapon, getting them to go behind more in transition, something that they focused on. Well, it's super important in these two hitter rotations if you have someone that can go behind in transition. And right there, you'll see on a perfect pass, they were planning on Gabriel setting O'Neal, so they just sent two blockers there with her already. Seventh block on the match for Kansas. Was that something you expected coming in, seeing those blocking numbers? No, it actually wasn't. It actually wasn't. I know they were concerned about the, the Texas offense, and, and rightfully so. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with what they're doing blocking-wise. And not just the, the actual blocks, but the block touches as well.
Amade off the Texas block. Another smart swing. You see, she doesn't really ever try to just blast the ball hard. She's not getting blocked straight down. She skipped that ball off the inside hand of Butler. She definitely knows what she's doing with the ball. Texas responds back row, Eggleston. And that's the beauty of having Eggleston in the back row. It's not just an out of system, we're way out of sorts. This is an in-system play where they're still in rhythm and running the offense as fast as they want to run it. Gabriel serving for Texas. Find that right side, the Texas block there, Fields and Breon Butler. It's a big block by Fields, and she just gets over the net. High, but over the net, pressing back into the court. Eighth block on the match. Puts Texas up by two. Just a miscommunication from the setter Nielsen trying to go into the middle. Timing wasn't there. They're working on that, that set coming from across the court. As she hits it off kind of like a front slide off one foot and that timing has to be perfect. So small run for Texas, 3-0 behind the serving arm of Jenna Gabriel. It looks like they're gonna, Kansas is going to flip into a 6-2 again. So they're changing their setter and their pins. Actually, there a little bit overlaps. And you setter in the front row. Elsie McGee, number 12. Pays dividends, gets the side out. Trying to just change things up a little bit. Kansas needs this to push it to a fourth Texas. Trying to move to 3-0 on the season. Have dropped just one set thus far. This is their third match. for Butler. And that is just, that is tough to stop. And the ball is set so high above the height of the net that you're definitely not going to touch it, touch it blocking-wise, but defensively. So my maybe. question, where my mind, can you stop that? I mean, right now, she, the only way she's made an error is hitting out, right? So, so as a defense, you're, that's what you're hoping for. I mean, I would. <laughs> Texas has their big serving arm of the freshman, Nalani Yosia. See if she can bring it into the clubhouse. Sensing such. Kansas with the timeout. Lead option offensively, 13 kills, 39 swings, hitting 231 on the match. I tell you, she's such, she's such a fantastic player. And you know, she does it all. That, that's the thing. She's getting fired up. She knows. She knows when there's an opportunity to win, where there's, you know, as they say, blood in the water. She wants it. So she's trying to rally the troops to get them going as best she can. And it's a lot. It's a lot to shoulder, but I think she's doing a nice job of, of carrying that load. 90 matches in three years at UCLA. 772 kills. Career high 28 against Colorado. Is that timeout? Stops the rally. Gives the ball back over to Kansas. Seventh service air for Texas on the evening. Gabriel for Butler. Trying to go out to the right for Molly Phillips. I'm not a dessert. Another perfect pass. Creates a split block opportunity, but Eggleston just sees the opening, chops that ball down the line. She's facing cross court as she sees it and cuts that ball down the line for the kill. 16 kills 
Puts her team two points away. Double digit kill match. At 17 and 18. Thus far on the year. Another crucial service error. As it did in the first set, sets up set point, but this one, match point for Texas. player just battling. Perfect pass, blasting off the top of the block. She, she doesn't want it to end. She's going to keep playing as hard as she possibly can. Came on top of the show, impact players Eggleston and Mosier. They have not disappointed, leading their two respective teams. 16 and 15 kills. Another match point for Texas. Where does Gabriel go? To Asia O'Neill, and that'll do it. Texas victorious, number one team in the country. 17 consecutive home wins, but their first here in their new digs.